Welcome to Backstage with Zadul. I'm your host Kishore from Zadul's very own marketing team and this is a podcast where we share eventful stories from thought leaders across industries to give you epic insights into the world of events and beyond. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Backstage with Zadul. Now, if you've been tuned in with the world and what society is trying to address these days, you will know that inclusivity is a very major aspect it's very important not just for companies but for our communities at large so we thought it'd be great to have a webinar on this and that's just what we did so our ceo and co-founder bharat varma as you all know got into a conversation with the ceo of interprofi odmun bratton and their senior product manager richard schiller and the three of them gave us great insights into how to run multilingual events what are the tools available and how to be inclusive by example so without further ado let's dive into the chat welcome uh, odmun and richard uh, nice to have you here thank oh, you very nice thank to you. be here great so uh, yeah so to uh, to uh, quickly kick start this uh, session uh, yeah just to like uh, lay the topic out there right so uh as in personally what i think about this is oh, like over the last 5 10 years there's just been uh a, like there's just been a lot of education around the need for uh for people to be inclusive and how important it is in the world that we exist in and uh and yeah there's just been a lot of globalization right like a lot of boundaries have been broken uh with the wide adoption of internet and yeah and you can pretty much be sitting out of one country and selling it to the uh, and selling it pretty much to the entire world right and uh yeah and i think we've uh kind of managed to dissolve boundaries so uh yeah so i guess it's about like how do you kind of take it to the next level right so uh and yeah in a time where events like you know with virtual uh especially the virtual events and how they've kind of managed to dissolve boundaries you know the case for a more diverse and inclusion inclusive approach to communication has just become so much more important than it has ever been right and yeah if b2b marketers want to truly enter new markets and expand their business reach it is very important uh for them to take the benefits of running these multilingual events right so they can uh kind of target different regions uh across the globe So yeah in this webinar we'll be exploring how technology plays a big role in enabling these B2B marketers to uh craft impactful multilingual events that not only help them create leads leads but also drive value for their attendees. Uh so any quick thoughts before uh we dive into the session? Now I think you're putting it on the point is globalization and and i've been in this business now with in as for 7 years with interpreting and and we forget because we are in the technology business that most of us speak english but basically it's only 17% of the world's population that has english as the language and so when we want to reach the whole world and as marketeers i think that's the key and how we can do that in an in efficient way and and also meeting the people where they in their own language i mean that's our purpose for um, interpify to to reduce language barriers and and help globalization and meet yeah that you don't force everyone to speak your language you meet them in their language and so yeah for sure i think you you got it absolutely right when you you know you were saying about the difference that the the internet has made to the world of business and the fact that you can you know do business everywhere all at once from a single location and language is the kind of missing factor in that that, that you know that's a great theory but as otman points out in order to achieve that you know you've got to spread your language more widely than than english or any other single language so there's a kind of you know really amazing capability there but you you have to um take into account the 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 multilingual side in order to exploit it yeah yeah 
for sure. Yeah, and I guess it's also uh, like Ardman said, uh, a lot of people, uh, as in, at least in the business world, do understand English and speak English uh, across like uh, across the globe right now. Uh, but I feel like there's just like when you communicate people to them, uh, when you communicate with people in their own language, uh, that definitely creates value, right? Uh, and there have been multiple studies that have been conducted which say that uh, 73% of potential customers or customers are a lot more likely to buy your product if you kind of talk to them in their own language, uh, hmm. right? I, I guess, uh, yeah, understanding the language and being able to communicate is one thing. Uh, but yeah, just having this feeling that, that the company uh, can really speak to me and kind of, I think that feeling itself, like, you know, uh, makes a difference to people. Definitely. Great. Great. So, yeah, so to get, uh, uh, so we have a bunch of, uh, like, you know, topics or uh, questions that, uh, that we had that we want to talk about. So the first one being, how important are multilingual events and how do they function as a revenue generator for marketers? Arvind, uh, would you want to, yeah, share your views on that? I think, well, partly you answered it already that a study showed that if you meet the customers in their language, then you can you can sell more, you can create more trust, and you can widen your reach. So I think that's it. In the end, it's a volume game and it's a game of numbers. So you by using multilingual capabilities you can reach people more and you can get deeper into them and and also in not just in the selling process but also in the education process afterwards where i think it becomes even more important that even though people understand the language you let's say english if you're using that to the simplicity but but in the education when you have it in your native tongue you understand it even further. And then that's important for, let's say, for medical and for a lot of, well, basically everything that it, you're selling and people are going to use. I think that's also a key point in not just in the selling process, but in the whole life cycle of what you're doing with the customers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and also, like, uh, uh, like one point that comes to my mind is, uh, I think traditionally, in terms of how events were conducted, were always in person, which meant that they've always had the geographical boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. So, and and because it was geographical, uh, because we had all these geographical boundaries, you, for a lot of events, you had like people from one region, or it was already widely known that. Uh, like the conference or the conversations are going to be in English. So the people who didn't understand it would not even show up to the conference. Right. And I think it was okay for a lot of organizers because of the limited capacities that venues, uh, like that, the, like because of the physical constraints of, of doing a physical, of doing an in-person event. Right. But, you know, now with virtual breaking the barriers of, uh, that were, that were there earlier from a geography perspective, no, and there's no restriction of size, right? So I think it's just so much easier to kind of reach out to a lot more people uh, than we've ever been able to do that in that sense. Yeah, and with uh, and with technology, uh, which companies like, you know, Interprefy offer, I think it's just like so much more easier for organizers to be able to offer, uh, you know, multilingual as a feature for almost uh, all their events, right? Again, I'm not saying that it makes sense for every single event. It obviously depends on the company. So I guess there's no, there's not going to be a one size fits all answer there. But, uh, but if you are a global company selling to different parts of the globe, like we've seen some of our, like, you know, large customers having a conference, uh, having a conference for the U S customers and the U S prospects and having the same content to be delivered to the EMEA. Uh, region and to the APAC region probably on the same day but in different time zones right because that is an important piece uh, 
but also to be able to offer like you know multilingual support there is an incredibly is an is an incredibly important thing to do right and and we've seen a lot of people do that uh and i'd say apart from that uh it's also uh i think one is like for people to really understand the, the different languages but i i guess it the other uh the other point is also that like for people for people for whom inclusion is an important piece like say for example if i am an english speaking person and i absolutely understand english but the fact that if certain brand really cares about making their events and all their content inclusive just and if that aligns with my value system i'm just a lot more likely to buy their products right uh, even if it is not like even if i'm not benefiting out of it just the fact that a brand really cares about it means something uh, to the audience i think you're absolutely right barad but i i would also say on a very you know more practical level um a lot of the time yes you can get through perhaps by using english but the understanding will be quicker and deeper if you are speaking in their own language so you know it it'll bring advantages in in you know way more cases than you would you would think um the the engagement is is so much greater uh and you know that's what you're trying to do isn't it you're trying to connect and as you point out it's a different way of connecting isn't it when we're all remote um you you know you can't do the things like um buy someone a coffee or, or whatever you know there there's a lot of things that have been taken away if you're working remotely so um things like um working uh, across languages helps put back some of that intimacy that you know you wouldn't otherwise have i'd i'd also note though that i i've worked in quite a lot of industries and uh some of them english was was really well spoken uh, i would note it was industries where there weren't so many people you know typically it was it was and the uh, the industries where there were you know more people around the globe but uh, there are more people who don't speak english and the, you know the that it becomes more important um for you to communicate to people in their in their own tongue but i i absolutely do agree with you it's also about that other sort of honoring and respecting side of of the of the um interaction that you know showing that you care so you get that whole raft of things you get efficiency you get more of a connection you you show your respect and and um you you know you you honor your your interlocutor interlocutor by by using their own language yeah uh for sure so yeah so moving on uh to the next question uh how to stay connected with uh, larger target groups in a remote world uh i guess i can start uh with this uh Yeah so one uh i think we just talked about a bit about this when we were talking about like how virtual has uh connected the whole world in a way that has never been really done before uh which essentially means that you can pretty much have like different target groups and like target different regions uh target different regions uh and yeah you can like literally target like you know from a new york city to a beijing or to a tokyo and you can have like your customers like all over uh so yeah i guess it's really about uh yeah when you're talking about how to stay connected with uh, large target groups it really depends on the company and it really depends on the market aspirations of the company right so probably if you're an early stage company that is just like really focusing on one geography uh I wouldn't say it's important but probably it's just not as important right because you're talking to a really specific set of people focused on one geography but yeah as the companies grow and as you start selling to different geographies and uh, and once you gain a foothold in one market uh, we all know that companies 
kind of want to uh, start selling in other regions of the world, right? So you might be a company that started off in in Beijing, or you might be a company that started off in SF. Uh, that doesn't matter. Like there'd come a point wherein you'd want to kind of get out of that home region and start selling to uh, other regions, right? And have target groups across the world, and then then it really uh, then the whole uh, you know concept of multilingual uh, capabilities in communication just becomes very very important right because like we covered uh, uh, just a while ago like everyone's just like a lot more comfortable uh, in their mother tongue uh, even if they can speak english so yeah so and and it's just and when you're talking about staying connected i guess it's just not about just the uh, the basic layer of communication right it is uh, it is also an import it is also the feeling of being connected with the brand uh, and and what the brand is talking about uh, and not just understanding what they're talking about it's about just feeling connected uh, to the mission vision the value system and i guess things like that is just so much easier if you feel that uh, yeah they're talking to you uh, and and also the second part is like why limit yourself right i think there was a time when only like probably really really large companies could do it just because of how expensive it was uh but now like yeah with technology like uh with you know with solutions uh uh like you offer it's just so much more affordable right and with virtual events and and the combination of virtual events with the integration solutions is just so much easier and a lot more affordable for uh, for companies to be able to do that much sooner than they've been able to do probably like five ten years ago. Yeah, I mean a lot has changed in the last, I would say, five to ten years, as you said. Technology has made it possible. And that's also how we we started to, you know, the classic way of providing, it, let's say, interpreting was that you had equipment on site with these boxes and radio receivers and and now with the internet you can replace tons of equipment it and flying in interpreters or transport so you can not just in providing it but also you're reducing the cost and increasing the capabilities that we you can add on not just audio interpreting you can add on captions you can have sign language, you can add on, maybe you get for an event last minute, a few people coming from Japan that wants to join. They weren't sure before for the online seminar, then you can add on languages and, and you're much more flexible also. So I think that flexibility is also something that's important in when, when you're out there with your customers and you can are more flexible on adding on things. It's, I think that's also key in, in my mind and where technology really helps. Yeah. And, uh, I was just going to, to, to add that, um, you know, I think the world's really very different and, and Odman talked about the last five to 10 years, but uh, I, I had a period uh, a few years ago of working with quite a lot of startup companies. And it was really notable that uh, I think most of the companies I worked with, that early market you, you're talking about, Brad, that, that was not in their own country. You know, because a lot of people who come up with high tech ideas, the first opportunity may not be next door these days. You know, you know that's not how the world is so much now. Um, for example, you know, one one company was was in the market that Odman knows really well, Telco, and uh, what they were selling was kind of a whole country thing. So you know, you will you will find your opportunity in the first country that has a you know that that that, that takes to your product, not not your own country. You know, it's statistically unlikely. So you'll find all your work is being done in a second language, in a language that no one in the the business knows, right? Um, so yeah, it can be even from the very get go that you need, um, this kind of capability, you know, you need to be talking to people in, in languages 
other than your own. And the other thing I would say, of course, is that even the small companies, because I saw this again with the startups I was dealing with, they, they wouldn't all be in the same country themselves, right? You know, so it's typically a, an international team, even if it's tiny uh, often now, but talking across, you know, to a, to a language which, you know, well, they may share several languages between them. They are actually, their first sales are happening in a, in a location with a, with a different language. And even if, as you know, as we said uh, earlier, even if the people that you are selling to, even if you make your first sale uh, and uh, everyone happens to talk, say, English or one of the languages that, 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 that you, you have, um, then, you know, you typically have to drive down into that business and be talking to the operational people and, uh, you know, the, 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 the ones uh, getting their hands dirty doing the work. Well, they are often not going to be multilingual. So, so you know, even for those early sales, the, the, uh, the need for um, a good coverage of languages is really important. And, you know, it's, it's vital, I think, to emphasize that what we're talking about here is, is really high quality delivery of, of language. So, you know, you can be sure that the message that you gave is is the one they'll receive, and that the you know they will understand you because if if it is your first sale, uh, you know you need it to go well, don't you? You need you you can't waste your time trying to communicate everything, trying to navigate through um, a, a language barrier. So so that uh, um, you know that that quality, that effectiveness is really very vital, I think, from day one for businesses these days. Yeah, I think you make a really interesting point there, right? Especially with, you know, the new age uh, B2B internet uh, SaaS companies. I think more often than not, you're actually, it just gives you the ability to kind of like, you know, uh, write some code and sell it to any region on the planet. And, and more often than not, like, uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're not selling to the market that you're probably starting the company in, right? So, uh, yeah, and I guess it's the same case with us. Like, we've started uh, in India, and, uh, yeah, our biggest market is probably the U.S., right? And and that's just true for a lot of companies. Like, we have, and you have some incredible companies, like, you know, coming out of, like, everywhere, right? Uh, I was just looking at the stat the other day wherein, like the more than 60 uh, comp B2B SaaS companies that do more than $100 million that are based out of Tel Aviv. Uh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure like uh, they do a whole lot of revenue in the US, in EMEA, uh, across the globe. So yeah, so I, yeah, that's definitely a really interesting point. Good. Uh, so to move on, uh, so the next question is the best technology, uh, yeah, uh, to discuss on the best technology available to offer multilingual support uh, in events. Richard, do you want to take that? Uh, so, yes. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no sort of simple, um, uh, you know, single answer to this. But if I can start with the fact that still, I believe, the very best um, engine that you can get for doing live real time interpretation is the human brain of the of the of the interpreter right so that's still outperforming the technological alternatives for you know the general case if if you like uh, and one of the things that we really specialize in at interpretify is that getting humans and and technology to work together in in harmony uh because that's absolutely vital in, in order to deliver you know the, the um the kind of uh, incredible gift that there is in that uh human interpreter um you need to make the technology work to the human right not not the other way around um always the the you know that's the weak link if you like um you, you know you you have to you have to um work around 
human beings because that's when you get the best out of them and you absolutely deliver the most. But uh, the, the world is constantly changing. And I was saying only yesterday uh, to a customer that if you look at um, uh, sort of speech recognition, for example, as a technology, uh, having worked in loads and loads of industries, I've never seen any anything moving so fast. Um, it's incredible. Just all the time, the performances are changing. Now, I think it's going to be some long time before uh, it, it catches up with everything that a human interpreter can, can do um, in the ideal conditions for a, for a human interpreter. Uh, and that's why most of our customers are using human interpretation for most things that, that, that matter. But uh, there are, you know, already cases where where um, machine technology is is better, uh, and so it's things like you know, at speed, um, uh, a computer will beat a, a human being, for example. Um, so, in terms of the best technologies, well, uh, the ge the general answer is human interpretation for for general interpretation. Um, machine speech recognition to turn that into uh, into readable text uh, and uh, machine translation to give you that at live instant uh, translation if you want the text translated. So you know your your options are to have a human interpreter or you can you can um, uh, translate the the the. Um, captions if if that's uh, going to suit your application um, and the other thing to to mention while we're talking about technologies um, and I think this is a really interesting way the world is is changing is that uh, while we all respond really well to the spoken word and that's what you know a vital part of, of any business, I would say, and you want to be talking to, literally talking to, and listening to your customers and your partners. Um, increasingly, the population is becoming uh, users of multiple media at the same time. And so this combination of listening to speech and reading text uh, simultaneously is is a standard way of communicating and, and most young people the majority now use subtitles on things like youtube or um uh you know any any sort of moving media um so uh you were saying sort of the ultimate really um that combination of of um uh you know the spoken word in your own language plus subtitles and for some people, it can be, you know, that, that if, if, you are, uh, if you are multilingual yourself, an awful lot of people are multilingual but not uh, proficient. So they might choose to listen in the original language but read the subtitles in their own, the, in their own language or <clears throat> to take the captions in the original language and then listen um, in their own language. So... So, but but that multi-pronged approach uh, uh, is is really kind of the way the the population is going, um, and uh, so you know you shouldn't think in just a, a sort of a narrow way these days of, of 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 just saying, well, I've delivered the content in one form. Um, that that's uh, you know that that's uh, uh, not going to be as appealing and not going to connect to younger people as it is to older people, for example. And I think it's about giving people the choice and the possibilities, as you mentioned. Richard, <clears throat> I would maybe listen in English, but I would get the captions in German because I know, okay, when I write the report to my German colleagues, I have that and I can use that and it makes it easier or so it's a splendid uh, capability. So it's not just for accessibility. It's for I would say for everyone. And and what I'm also seeing, if you just provide the 
capability, then you'd be surprised what people are using it for. So we had, for example, one of our main customers is a big international organization, the, the UN, and they were they used, we switched on these captions for accessibility reasons, for, because some people needed it. But then for later on, we switched it off. And then pe other people said, switch it on again, because they used it for their notes to, to ask questions to whoever was speaking before, what did they say? So by then it's, it's not just about language, it's about understanding, it's about giving people all these capabilities, and then they will make something out of it. And then, so that's also, and, and important is also the quality, of course, that when things are translated and that it's correct. And, and Richard is mentioning that the human brain is it's great, but I think the machine has a lot of advantages also, and certainly in, when you want to reach out into the long tail of customers, it also has a cost advantage, not just a speed advantage. So. Yeah, I guess it's probably the, the use of humans uh, plus the technology. And I guess it really depends on the use case and at what scale you want to do it. And yeah, I think like you've mentioned, uh, I don't think that there's like a one, uh, like, you know, one answer for every use case. Uh, but yeah, probably it is uh, the human plus the technology and, and how much of human and how much of technology really depends on the use case and, and the scale at which you want to do it. Another example of the, of the two working in harmony is that um, to generate captions, what we do is we will educate the system so that it's prepared for the sort of conversation that's, that's going to be had uh, in the event. And that makes a tremendous difference to the real world performance. Uh, and it takes it to, you know, really very very good quality um, and that preparation can largely be done uh, in an automated way but there's always a little bit which is uh, going to be done by human beings at the moment so so you know you, you will find for example if you if you use an event with captions and you want you know a quality um, then uh, you know, there will be this this small human element in there that 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 um, helps make that difference um, between uh, you know good and the the very best. Yeah, yeah. I, I think like one uh, like you know one point that stood out to me uh, that you're making was uh, just the fact that like you can't really. Yeah, it, it's really just hard to estimate uh, how people are going to use this technology and how it's going to be useful for different sets of people, right? Uh, because most people or most companies do it with the intent of making it accessible. But I think it's just a really interesting point that you had audience who were just using it for a completely different uh, purpose, right? Like, you know, in this case, for taking notes and to kind of pass it on to their colleagues and things like that. Uh, yeah, I think it's just about giving people the options and yeah there, there'd be some pretty interesting uh you know uh use cases that 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 come out of this well interestingly even if you take people say with with hearing loss um who might be using captions as you know perhaps um a, a, a strong component of the way they understand what's being said um those people will will typically be of course using their eyes just like the rest of us do uh to follow you know reading the text on slides and and uh, looking at expressions and all those things that you do almost without noticing um but uh they quite often they can hear some of uh, what's going on and they will be getting some component um uh you know through hearing they'll be getting some through following the captions um, and as we've already discussed a lot, you know, people will work in multiple languages at the same time. So they will, you know, or even if it's the same language, they'll be, of course, partly listening, partly reading and, and so on. And you end up with really quite a complex balance uh, that, 
that means, you know, it's almost unfathomable um, w w exactly how each person did manage to follow the event. You, you know, there's the, 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 it's such a complex e equation. And what it really tells you is that you have to pay attention to doing everything the best way you can if you want to have the best results, right? That, that um, you know, you, you cannot dismiss any part of that equation. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. Uh, so moving on to the next topic, uh, what should the community, what should be the communication strategy for your uh, next event? Yeah, that's a good <clears throat> question. I think choosing the right platform to have it on, like we are on now. And then when you're thinking about your audience and, and think, about the reach and then uh, just yeah, add on the languages, get the right technology, get the right partners, I think, if we're reaching out to those organizing events and then let have, we like to have the discussion with the customer and, and sort of consult them in what makes sense, which platforms, in which formats and uh, in also which languages, what uh, capabilities we add on, and then to understand a little bit of who they want to reach also. And, and of course, the event is not just what's happening here and now, it's the recording afterwards. You can even add on languages and localization after that. So a webinar then be can become a training that again can become marketing material that you can then add on so it's let's say an event also lives after the event and i think that's also something that's that's new that you can add on localization as i said and and also think about blending if you have some on-site event you can have also a hybrid event with external people external speakers because sometimes to get the best speakers they need to work as we do often nowadays from where they are and to get them to come to a certain location is first costly and time wise and you can't get the specialist in professor in some special area you want to to bring to your customer that are doctors or so so i think it's back to this flexibility and and working with the rest the right partner and, and understanding each other i think also like we are trying to so yeah uh, yeah I guess it all starts really with the objectives uh, of the organizations in terms of like what do they really want to kind of achieve out of that event or webinar or what are they doing and the target market that they're going after right but I guess what the new technology offers is the fact that you can you you no longer have the barriers you used to before in, in terms of the geographical boundaries, right? Uh, right? Like you've mentioned, you can get speaker, uh, you know, com fr from a completely different country who probably cannot talk your language and still get them to talk to your audience. I think that is incredibly uh, powerful, right? So, and also you don't really need to kind of restrict yourself uh, to speakers being available in your physical location or even in your country for that matter or uh, even restrict speakers based on the on the language that they can communicate in so mm. yeah, it definitely does uh, break a lot of barriers but yeah I guess it really depends on uh, the objectives uh, of, of of the communication in the first place I think there's one question really that you need to ask at the beginning of your planning always which is, does this matter? Yeah, and if it matters, then you've got to do the best job that you, you can, right? Because an awful lot of effort and time goes into these things quite often. Um, and also, you, you know, the simple question of, well, if it doesn't matter, why are you doing it, right? So, uh, you know, you have to be careful. You have to choose the partners 
that that are going to um, you be able to deliver for you, and you have to choose the you know the technology, the solutions that are going to give you the kind of performance that mean that your message is going to get through, or that you are going to understand what's being said to you. Um, you know that that you make the event, you, you get the absolute maximum out of the event. I don't think there's any of us who are sitting here saying, "I've got lots of time on my hands. It doesn't matter whether I spend tomorrow usefully or not." You know, we're none of us in that position. So make the absolute most of every opportunity that you get. This was Backstage with Zadul. If you'd like to hear more episodes, don't forget to subscribe. You can also listen to our episodes on Spotify, Google, or wherever you stream podcasts. Don't forget to visit zadul.com to know more about how you can begin humanizing events.